It's not hard to forgive. It's impossible. Uh, without the Lord doing it in you, like it's almost impossible to do so. So this morning uh, could be one of the most important messages that we lean into. Because here's what I can guarantee. That someone, somewhere, someplace, they're going to hurt you. They're going to wound you. They're going to disappoint you. And there's a couple of options that you have, right? You can avoid them. You can ignore them. You can cancel them. You can disown them. Uh, the thought today is you could ghost them or you could forgive them. And by the way, to truly be free, then you have to forgive. And Jesus is going to show us how to do that. So today, if you're following along in the Bible app or if you're taking notes, number one is this. Forgiveness is the beginning of reconciliation. So before we even start in this story that Jesus is going to share with us today, Jesus sets this scenario, a scenario up by creating this thought that, that Jesus is going to start the conversation with. Here's what he says. Uh, let's say... That a brother or a sister offends you. What do you do? So Jesus brings that up. Jesus is sitting at the uh, lunchroom table. And uh, as they, everybody opens up their lunchbox, their lunch bag, Jesus just kind of throws this out there. What do you do when a brother or sister, by the way, keep in mind in the context here, he's talking about like a person of the faith. The, the, the setting is this, someone even in the church, okay? So someone in the church offends you, what do you do? And then Jesus outlines uh, kind of this three-step three step process that we're supposed to walk through, right? And many of you have heard this because we love, a lot of people who don't even, have never even read the Bible, more or less know anything about it. I mean, never even opened it. They'll always say, well, you know, Matthew 18, Matthew 18. I'll go, what does Matthew 18 mean? And they're like, I don't know, but I just heard you're supposed to say Matthew 18, right? Whenever someone offends you, you're supposed to say, well, it's not that you just say Matthew 18, but we're supposed to follow this outline to reconciling relationships that Jesus gives in Matthew 18. And here's how it goes. Number one, keep in mind, brothers and sisters, you are to go to the person and one-on-one -on -one talk with them. Like that's step one. Jesus said, here's what you do when someone offends you. Go to them and talk to them, all right? Now, number two is this. Then if that doesn't work, bring someone else with you. Almost like a, a, an invited guest, a mediator, right? Who could possibly help in the situation. If that doesn't work, then Jesus says this. Then talk to the leaders of the church and see if they can help maybe make sense of this situation. So now it's you and that person, a guest, and someone from the church is going to go. And so now we have this model that Jesus gave us that when someone offends us, right? When, and Peter says when someone sins against us, then we have a pathway of forgiveness of reconciliation so that we can watch God transform the relationship. But there's a couple reasons we don't like this because here's the problem with it. We want to talk to everyone else but them. You ever notice that? Like if someone offends you, someone hurts you, someone says something about you, instead of going one-on-one, -on -one, like we go one to a hundred. Like let's find a hundred people who will listen to our story so that we can complain, we can vent, we can air out our laundry of that person, basically so that we can tell our side of the story. A really wise person told me one time, there are three sides to every story. Three sides. There's your side, there's their side, and then there's the real side, right? There's three sides. But we love to just share our story. And here's the thing. When, when we only share our side of the story with someone who's not even involved in the story, there, there can, there, there's not going to be resolution or resolve with the person that you actually should be talking with. And here's why, though. Because when we talk to someone who agrees with us, and, 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 they're only, and we're only sharing, again, our side of the story, 
how we were wronged, how we were offended, right? Then we become full of us. <laughs> like we become full of ourselves. I have a friend, he's actually a missionary. He serves in the Dominican Republic, and I'm really hoping his wife doesn't listen this Sunday. Uh, but he, uh, his wife put him on a diet, uh, a pretty, uh, pretty strict diet she has put him on. Part of that was uh, he went for his annual checkup, and let's just say uh, D's and F's would have been his score on a report card. Like He didn't do so well, and so she has started uh, making him breakfast and, and packing his lunch. Here's the thing. As soon as he leaves the house, he doesn't eat the breakfast. He doesn't even think about the lunch. He throws it all out, and then on his way home, his favorite place to eat is McDonald's, even in the Dominican. So he'll get a Big Mac, a fry, and a Diet Coke. Like, I don't know how the Diet Coke's going to help, but he'll get a Diet Coke to go with that. And then when he gets home, his wife's like, I just don't understand. Like, you're eating everything that I'm preparing. We're, we're following the doctor's example, and I don't know why you're not losing weight. And he's like, yeah, it's really weird, isn't it? Like, I don't know what to tell you. See, here's the thing. It doesn't matter what she makes for him to eat, right? He's already full. Like, like he is allowing something else to, to uh, uh, fulfill the appetite inside of him. And it's the same way with conflict resolution. Like when you only want to be full of you, you're not going to have an appetite to want to listen and lean in and even resolve the situation. We love that. We, we love to go to our friends who can validate our feelings, and then they will feed us the appetite of us. And a lot of times it's with like social media platitudes, things like this. Have you seen this one, read this one? If they don't love you at your worst, then they don't deserve you at your best. But that's ridiculous, by the way. Can we just say that? Okay, have you ever thought about this? Maybe it's your worst that's the problem, right? Like maybe if you would ask forgiveness, ask for an apology for your worst, maybe it'd be easier for them to then love you. Because here's the thought. Our goal should not be to win an argument. The goal is to win the relationship back. That's what Jesus presented, all right? So here's the thought. Reconciliation requires two. But this is where the message is going to change. Reconciliation requires two people. Forgiveness requires one. Just requires one person. And guess who that one person is? You. Normally, it's the person who's been offended. Normally, it's the person who's been, as Peter said, sinned again. 